urban millennials and Zoomers really have a fantastic future to look forward to, embroiled in mountains of student debt. No savings and no inheritance because their boomer parents have blown it all on luxury cruisers, living atomized, transient, lonely lives in decaying dystopian megacities. Unable to afford any kind of standard of living that provides them with basic dignity or privacy, eating eco-friendly rations of insects, forced to live like ants in colonies. Meet the pod people. Podshare is affordable shared housing that we build across Los Angeles and here in San Francisco is our first site. The idea, it's membership-based housing, so if you book a pod, you can stay across the whole network of locations. Great, $1,200 a month to live in a pod in the middle of San Francisco. A shithole where the streets are littered with used needles, mountains of trash and piles of oozing feces. Where thanks to chronic homelessness and an exploding rat population, medieval diseases are making a comeback. So trendy. My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a communist state. What if you could subscribe to a housing membership and have all your needs met? All my needs met? Transcendent purpose, family, children, or authentic, life-affirming happiness. Podshare model is really for myself, which is solo, single, no children, no pets. You know, like I'm really just building something I want to live in. Oh, how about the basic human right to privacy? This location has two bathrooms. And this one's currently being used. The hardest thing about living in a place like this is that you give up your privacy. There's certain things you have to give up, and that's privacy here. Where else are you forced to live in smothering close proximity to other people with no privacy? So close that they can hear and witness your every bowel movement. Oh yeah, prison. If the rents ever became normalized, then then I don't know if a pod share would be necessary because everyone would just get their own private place. Which is never gonna happen. Why is rent in San Francisco so high? Onerous regulations on building new homes, illegal immigration, and a wealthy Silicon Valley elite that has artificially inflated prices at the expense of the middle class. None of that is going away. I earn about $3,000 per month. I tried living in San Francisco on that budget. I was able to do it, but it was really, really hard. Right, so you're literally spending nearly half your income on a pod and then complaining about not making ends meet. Maybe live somewhere other than San Francisco? I am getting all the value that the city holds. All the value the city holds? The value of contracting bubonic plague? The value of slipping and falling face down onto a mound of putrid shit? The value of accidentally nicking yourself with a used syringe and catching hepatitis C? So trendy. But hey, at least you won't have to hang out with the street junkies when you can blow whatever tiny amount of disposable income you have left on stimulants in the comfort and safety of your own pod. You just share pods. But Paul, all of this sounds a little bit chilling. Surely it wasn't ripped straight from the plot of a nightmarish Black Mirror episode. Surely not again. Sh yeah, it was. What a time to be alive. Drug and alcohol abuse rampant, soaring depression rates, all-time suicide highs. No pets, no family, no disposable income, no savings, no ownership. Sleep in a pod, work in a pod. Avocar Dachau. But seriously, someone compared a photo from Auschwitz to one of these pod homes and it doesn't even look that different. What does the future hold for the pod people? Ten years later, still paying off the mortgage for the ownership of their own internal organs. Living the dream. It's called capitalism, Paul. Oh, damn. Owned. You said the C word. That instantly wins the argument. If it's done in the name of capitalism, it must be good, right? Even though the CEO of the company herself literally said it's based on communism. My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a communist state. But wait, I thought the entire point of capitalism was to generate prosperity so people could own things. Like homes. No one owns these pods. The pod people are perpetual rent surfs. In America, home ownership is at its lowest level in half a century, and that's mostly driven by broke millennials. In the UK, home ownership for young adults on a middle income fell to just 27% in 2016, down from 65% two decades ago. Mean house prices were 152% higher in 2015-16 than in 1995-96, after adjusting for inflation. By contrast, the real net family incomes of those aged 25 to 34 grew by only 22% over those same 20 years. Young people, many of whom are laboring under an average of $30,000 in student debt, 
can't afford to buy homes. They're all rent serfs. Thanks, capitalism. Compare that to communist countries like Cuba and China, where home ownership is around 90%. We don't live under free market capitalism. We live under a system of socialism for the rich. The banks got bailed out and the bubble was inflated exponentially. Guess who paid for that? You. By a quantitative easing, money printing, and inflation, while your wages stagnated. That's why no one can afford to buy a house. That's why we're forced to rent out pods. You just share pods. That's why home ownership is plummeting. Muammar Gaddafi was eerily prescient in his warnings about the migrant crisis. Maybe we should listen to what he had to say about home ownership. Whoever possesses the house in which you dwell, the vehicle in which you ride, or the income on which you live, possesses your freedom. To satisfy these material needs through rent, gives the original owner the right to interfere in your personal life and to control your imperative needs. Even if the original owner be the society in general, the original owner can usurp your freedom and take away your happiness. Michel Welbeck, children existed solely to inherit a man's trade, his moral code and his property. This was taken for granted among the aristocracy, but merchants, craftsmen and peasants also bought into the idea. So it became the norm at every level of society. That's all gone now. I work for someone else, I rent my apartment from someone else, there's nothing for my son to inherit. If we do not restore the institution of property, we cannot escape restoring the institution of slavery. There is no third course. Home ownership is freedom. Civic investment is freedom. Property is freedom. Family is freedom. Community is is freedom. Shelling out half your income to live cheek by jowl with some random people that you'll never even see again. In such close quarters that they can hear whenever you're pooping. In such close quarters that you're prevented from forming any kind of romantic relationship because you inhabit a permanently visible prison-style bunk bed. All because you've been indoctrinated that it's trendy to live in a soul-destroying, alienating, unaffordable, decadent, deteriorating metropolis. That's not freedom. <laughs> My voice is being silenced by free speech hating Silicon Valley giants who want me disappeared forever. It's absolutely crucial that you support me by donating at Subscribestar. It's also vital that you sign up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter so we never lose contact. And please support my sponsor Turboforce, the powerful new energy drink without the come down. Link in description.